on Royal Princess, one of the biggest luxury cruise ships in the world. Beautiful. Makes you wonder how they keep afloat. <laughs> it's all aboard for the start of a busy summer season cruising the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, the trolley actually fell with other bags into the water. For the three and a half thousand passengers, this is unbelievable. This is. It's the trip of a lifetime. You're in a real five star luxury bubble here, really. Upstairs, a chance to relax and celebrate. David, you may kiss your bride. Our policy here is never say no. Fruit or chocolate. Let's go. While downstairs, 1,400 staff work around the clock to meet the highest standards. That is unacceptable. $2,000 for a cruise, and that's what we give them. And deal with the daily dramas of life aboard. 911, medical emergency. Just a half a billion euro ship and 25 year old blonde. What could possibly go wrong? Tonight, there's a wedding on board, but unexpected wet weather could drown out proceedings. <gasps> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. Choppy sea spelled danger for the ship's magicians. The top of the sword is eight foot high, so if I fall head headways, I could actually break my neck. And on the bridge, it's all hands on deck for an emergency. We don't know how long it's been there, but there's no signs of life on board. It's a sea day on Royal Princess, and passengers won't be on dry land for 34 hours. To make matters worse, they've awoken to a freak storm. Oh, it's unbelievable. I decided to come away, and it's boring. <laughs> Leaving the crew the mammoth job of keeping 3,500 restless passengers fed and entertained. When you've got adverse weather, everybody's inside, and inside causes eating. They've just been annihilating us. They completely attacked the boat bay. Can you call the supervisor? Can you call the supervisor, please? It's stressful for everybody. Oh, it is a bit like, dreary. For aviation technician Dave, it's the biggest day of his life. He's getting married today, after saving up for three years for his nautical nuptials. He got some waterproofs. Oh. <laughs> Wow, it's really strong, really. I definitely didn't expect to bring my wellies. Uh, we haven't brought raincoats or anything, so um, we'll just have to see how it goes. My hair, I want plaits to the side and then like a low bun, so my veil go in it. In the ship's beauty salon, secondary school teacher Kat is bracing herself for a very wet wedding. It needs to be half up, half down, or else I will be eating my hair. So, that'd be nice. It was really, really rocky last night. It will be fine. Is it still raining? Or has it stopped now? But the bride hasn't seen the drowned out deck where her wedding reception is due to be held in just a few hours. It should be that bad, though, should it? Well, if they just do it for when she walks in. She says this bit will be fine, so yeah. it's a case yeah. of just sort of. As long as it's clear for her to walk in, it should be all right. I've never seen a wet floor sign so applicable. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> It will rain on our wedding day, so it's not bad luck. Mother of the bride, Beverly, is doing her best to keep her daughter's spirits up. I suppose because you always think of your child as your little girl. I mean, you always know the day's coming. You know they're on borrowed time. You've only got them for a short while. Oh, I just lost it, lost the plot. If the weather doesn't improve, their white wedding could be a washout. Uh, stopping the engine and all control on the port wing. Up on the bridge, bad weather can have more serious consequences. The ship's helmsman has spotted an upturned boat in the water. We weren't close enough to see if there's anyone in the water, so we'll turn back and have a look and see what we find. Maritime law means that even cruise ships must stop to help in emergencies. A piece of unattended debris could cause a serious hazard to other vessels. We come back on the other side of it. On the other side. Okay. The captain has given orders to turn the ship around and mobilize the rescue team. Yes, the position is 41 degrees, 21 minutes, 4121. For new bridge officer Lauren, it's the first emergency she's dealt with on board. 
a situation like this, you're very tense because you might not be able to help, and that's going to stay with you for a long time. If there's life on board, the ship's fast response vessel will be launched. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. There is an object in the water at first glance. Looks very likely. Rumours are quick to circulate on the ship and its front desk that passengers come to first. This morning, a boat was spotted outside, turned over. So... It's one of the most challenging departments on board, with over 15 staff answering queries 24 hours a day. I'm super nervous, Sam. OK. Hoping to join the fast-paced front line is galley assistant Nico, who's been invited for an interview. Very yeah, you look great. Accompanying him is executive chef David, who has recommended him for the coveted role. Come on in, Nico. Nice to see you. Please sit down. Tell me briefly why it is that you want to switch over into the guest services role. Because I want to expand my learning, Sir Richard. I'm going to stop you there. As much as I like the, the sound of Sir Richard, really, Richard or HGM is just fine, OK? Um, and while we encourage you to have fun and be a great personality out there, you must learn when we have to be quite serious and more professional in our approach with them. I can handle it properly, sir, uh, Richard. It's a big um, career decision for you. Mm. We'll get you some time on the front desk. Show the chef that it was a good choice to put you forward for it. OK? All right, Nico. Thank All right. you, sir, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, Richard. Sir Richard, I think I should be called that from now on. All right, chef, thanks for your thanks. time. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to stand on the front desk. Training Nico will be a new challenge for front desk agents Timothy and Emma. I think there are, look, oh, they're all serious. But when I came there, I will change everything, of course. I will put smile to their faces. It's all about putting on a performance on board. And with theatres showcasing an array of West End style shows, there's competition to pull in the crowds. You can put bubbles in it if you want to. That might be interesting. <laughs> Hoping to pack out the house tonight is master magician Johnny from Nottinghamshire. Red. And his assistant, Trisha. Indian, don't kiss my hand because that's stupid. Let's do it now, see what we can do. Yeah. The couple met whilst working as dancers on a cruise ship 13 years ago. Maybe you can say. Instead of his assistant, he can say, and his wife, Trisha Hawley, or something. I don't mind. But living in the same cabin and performing together four times a week can put extra pressure on their relationship. Step and go like that. Let me come out. Don't take my hand or anything. Well, I'll Maybe just go like that, then. I'll come out and I'll do my arms up by myself. There. Make sure you connect with me when you come out. OK. OK? So we run out, look at each other, smile. Yes. And then I'll go like that, and then you throw your arms up. With us, there's not really show and then our marriage, like, our marriage is the show, the show is the marriage. Aha, uh -huh. that's where my trousers are. <laughs> Today, the married magicians are putting on their show-stopping sword stunt. The top of the sword is about eight foot high, maybe a little bit higher. So if I fall head headways, I could actually break my neck. If the choppy seas make the trick too dangerous, the couple will have to pull it from their show and disappoint passengers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, just to update you. Uh, Holding position a short distance away from the wreck. Up on the bridge, Captain Bob has brought the ship alongside the upturned boat. But he's got an added dilemma. You may wonder why we haven't deployed one of our rescue boats. The reason is it's quite choppy down there. It's two to three metres of swell. The rescue team are on standby, but conditions pose significant danger. If someone is in the water uh, with uh, this weather condition, about two or three metres of swell, and this wind uh, will not survive for, uh, for a very long time. We're all seafarers. We would appreciate the fact that one day it could be us. So we absolutely want to make sure there's no one in there. And if there were to be someone in there, then the guys are already stood by the rescue boat so we can drop down. The team have made an emergency call to the Coast Guard. There is no damage yes. visible on it. Yes. And the bow is basically yes. outside of the water. 
Together, they must decide whether to send the crew into the treacherous waters. If there's life on board, then time is running out. We don't really want to put one of our boats in the water because of the conditions are uh, sufficiently choppy that it would be quite risky for our own crew. While they decide what action to take, Bridge Officer Lauren has been tasked with the vital job of keeping an eye on the wreck. Worst case scenario for us will be finding somebody in the water. Survival at sea, especially in today's weather conditions, it's not going to be pleasant for anybody who may be down there. It's stormy sea day aboard Royal Princess. The ship has made an emergency stop at sea and they haven't moved for two hours. Earlier this morning, the bridge watch visually observed a floating object and it turns out to be the semi-submerged hull of a pleasure craft. There is one with the boy attached to the bow. We've taken a lot of photos of it so we can quite clearly prove that there is, there's no signs of life on board. There's no damage would suggest that it's just drifted through its moorings in the strong winds that they've had overnight. With no signs of life aboard, they're anxious to restart the engines. The port of Barcelona is still 450 miles away, and if they don't leave soon, they could fall badly behind schedule. OK, now we've been here for more than uh, two hours now, and we don't yeah. see anything, so are you happy for us to resume passage? But before they can leave the wreck, the Coast Guard must give them permission. Perfect. I made the decision not to launch on this occasion because the swell and sea conditions were pretty rough. Had there been somebody in the water or on the craft, then yes, we would certainly put a boat down to help them out. The rescue team can be stood down, and for Lauren, it's a valuable lesson in what to do when you come across a wreck at sea. Luckily, this one got a happy ending, but this is where your training absolutely kicks in. You have to be able to ready to react at a moment's notice. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. This is Nico Espera. May I help you? Hoping to sail into a new job on front desk is galley assistant Nico, who is preparing for the first of three trial shifts. And now I'm ready to go to work. But moving up from the galley means much more than just a new name badge. My family's gonna be happy because my contract will be lessened. Because uh, in the front desk, you only have six months. But in a kitchen, you have nine months contract. Finger crossed, I hope I can get this job. So this is like your ship Bible, all right? Nico's first trial will be supervised by front desk veterans, Timothy and Emma, who waste no time in sizing him up. You have some cool glasses. I think you like them. Oh. On front desk, it's all about first impressions. I think your trousers might be slightly long, so mm. we can get them adjusted yeah, it's for like, um, you. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't quite iron the shirt, did we? But it's OK. Mm -hmm. And I love the brown shoes. You're allowed to wear brown to work. Yeah. And not allowed. It's black. It's black, we dear. Don't have any. Nico might not look the part, but it's his customer interaction that he'll be judged on. If that's flashing, that's a passenger in their room. When someone comes from a different department, there's a lot of work for us to train them. And you know the dine line? The dine line. <laughs> it's OK. So the dine line <clears throat> is where they can book and make reservations. Oh. Well, you have to be quick, because there's lots coming at you all the time. And all they dial is 138 on the phone. 139. 138. 138. Yes, that's right. Maybe we should find you a notepad, actually. Let me see if we have one. Mm -hmm. They're busy. I'm not yet ready to answer the phone. It's a faltering start for Nico, who only has two more shifts to prove he's got what it takes to work on front desk. This is where the anxiety kind of kicks in a little bit. The sea is still choppy, but the ship's magicians have decided to go ahead with their daring headline illusion. People out there, yeah. With 800 people expected, there's no room for error. It's showtime! Let's kill it. Okay. Yep.
The sword balancing act demands pinpoint precision, so Trisha must be careful. Decent crowd, weren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah. The show has been a success. But backstage, Trisha Hawley isn't feeling herself. I went dizzy a few more times in that show. You did? Yeah. If you go dizzy again, you should go to medical tomorrow. Yeah. Because, uh, what happened to me the other day? When she's balancing on the sword, she has to have complete concentration. Like if she was to pass out or something, it could be terrible. She could really get injured. So, Charles! Charles! Down in the ship's galley, the upcoming nuptials are causing added grief for Chef David. I've been at it since 6 o'clock this morning. I haven't taken a break. On top of running 12 restaurants, he's got a wedding cake to ice and 300 canapes to prepare. And then we've got to throw in a little wedding for, uh, whatever, 18 people. But happy days, I mean, it's their marriage, not mine. Make it look uh, presentable. It's the woman's wedding, for God's sake. Yeah, come on. Does my hair look all right as it is? It does, it looks fine. Yeah, I did it, it really this does. morning, so yeah, fine. Exactly. Upstairs, the groom is also putting the finishing touches to his big day. Have you got the rings? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I was just thinking One job, that. Luke. Luckily, I've, I've reminded him before he got to the uh, altar. Ooh. No, I'm still shit. <laughs> 300 British couples get married on this fleet each year. Overseeing today's ceremony is Captain Bob, who has the power to marry people aboard. You know, you're doing something which people are going to remember for the rest of their lives, either for the better or worse. People have this uh, vision of perhaps sailing away into the future together. Ow! Ow! Yeah, I well think you'll be emotional at this point. I think you'll be getting emotional now, like, getting nervous. In the girls' cabin, Kat and her bridesmaids are running behind schedule. We've got loads of time. It's no stress. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hopefully everyone knows what they're doing, because I don't really know what I'm doing, so... Wedding chapel. OK. Trouble, trouble at mill. The captain can't wait around all day, but timekeeping doesn't seem to be phasing the bride, who is now 40 minutes late. It's gone really quick at the end, hasn't it? Yeah, it was really slow this morning. Yeah, I thought we had loads of time. Uh-huh. It didn't quite happen that way at the end, did it? It's an anxious wait for groom Dave, but fortunately, Captain Bob is on hand with some pearls of wisdom. The good thing about being on a ship is even if the brine's late, you know, she's within a thousand feet of me. Yeah, that's it, yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're not pregnant. I don't think there's any way. It could be, that all oh, symptoms, can you imagine? <laughs> I'm a little magician. Mm. For the last decade, their magic show has been their baby. But ship life could be about to change dramatically. It's too hard. We've put so much money and time and effort into our show. And with a kid, we'd kind of have to stop all that. OK, Trisha, do you want to come through? They've got an appointment with Dr Dillon at the ship's medical centre. During the show, I had a few little dizzy spells at okay. times. Is there any chance that you could be pregnant? I did miss a pill. OK. <laughs> like two weeks ago. So I know there is probably a slight possibility, but... Right. OK. You're actually trying to get pregnant at the moment. That's no. Not a... <laughs> no, no, no. Just like a nervous look. <laughs> OK. <laughs> First of all, I don't know whether this is good news or whatever, but your pregnancy test was negative. So oh, that's, that's OK. <laughs> Um, but you do have a urinary tract infection, so uh, we're going to need to give you some antibiotics for that. Okay. When he said negative, it took me a few seconds to think, like, wait, what does that mean? There's <laughs> <laughs> so much to think about in future, isn't it? Yeah. It's a relief. In the ship's wedding chapel, groom Dave can also breathe a sigh of relief. 
Nearly an hour late, his bride has finally made an appearance. It's all right. It's all right. Did he do the tissue? <laughs> well, a very warm welcome to everyone, and especially to David and Catherine on this their special day. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. Don't dislocate the finger, it's not a good start. <laughs> I now pronounce you husband and wife. David, you can I kiss your bride. And the icing on the cake, the rain has finally subsided. I'd like to propose a toast to Cat and Dave, the future of Mr and Mrs Bevan. Cheers. Now sit down now. Yeah, you can sit down. <laughs> right, well, you've got 20 minutes to get all this food eaten. I don't want anything left over. And get as many drinks in while they're still going for eat. Next time. Next, please. Is this not you? No, I'm not a man. I've got a nice <laughs> name, but I'm... Nico is out of his depth on front desk. This is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first one I'm going to launch by myself. Lauren faces her most physical challenge yet. I would complain as well. I'd complain bitterly. And things are reaching boiling point in the galley. If that's what we come up with, then your position is in question. You understand? 